morning. Uh, my name is David Campos. I'm a Deputy County Executive for the County of Santa Clara. Uh, and today I will be playing the role of a Public Information Officer for the Emergency Operations Center for the County of Santa Clara. Uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in this morning. Uh, I am joined today uh, by, the, uh, by Dr. Tong, who is overseeing uh, the county's uh, effort to prepare for the issue of surge. Uh, she's in charge of the surge branch of the county's uh, emergency operations center, and she will be providing detailed information about our uh, efforts to prepare. And we will be hearing from our board president, uh, Supervisor Cindy Chavez. I want to note that our uh, chief executive, uh, Dr. Smith, has been called on a different matter. Uh, that he had to attend to. Uh, but today is uh, an opportunity for the County of Santa Clara to provide our residents additional information about two very important subjects. And we want to note that two uh, databases uh, have actually, dashboards have gone online and are now live that are accessible to the public. Uh, one of them is a, a dashboard that actually provides information about hospital capacity which we know is a very important issue uh, for certainly the county, but all residents uh, uh, have been uh, thinking about that issue and worried about that issue. And then the second subject is the issue of uh, testing. Uh, there is a dashboard that actually provides detailed information on testing, and you're going to hear more specifics from Dr. Tong in a couple of minutes. I do want to note that hospital capacity and the data that is included uh, in the dashboard includes the following, uh, the number of acute hospital beds that are available, the number of intensive care unit beds, the number of ventilators, and surge beds. Uh, and with respect to sur surge beds, we want to know that surge beds, we want you to know that surge beds are the additional beds that are not normally used in the hospital system, but that are actually, uh, that may be needed uh, in light of uh, this event of COVID-19. Uh, and just for the public, we want you to know that as of March 31st, there were 936 available acute hospital beds in the county. There were 92 ICU beds, 1,456 surge beds, and 392 ventilators that were, were available in the county. Uh, this data represents a snapshot of where we were at a specific moment of, uh, of time, and again, March 31st, 2020, and this can change, and we will make sure that the information is updated as often as possible. With respect to the lab testing dashboard, uh, that dashboard shows the total and daily testing volume for COVID-19 in the County of Santa Clara. Laboratory testing for this uh, virus uh, is provided by commercial lab laboratories, by academic laboratories, and the public health laboratory. The public health laboratory is the sentinel and bridging laboratory in this kind of an emergency. The testing capacity in this county uh, becomes more widely available uh, depending on the ability of these players to provide more testing. Uh, the capacity is thus dependent on the ability of commercial and academic laboratories to grow their capacity rapidly. Lastly, as of April 1st, there were 8,246 residents of Santa Clara County that were tested for the virus. 956 residents of those tests were positive. 11.59% thus of those tested, tested positive. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Tong, who has been leading with her team the effort to get ready when it comes to capacity in our hospital system. Dr. Tong. Good morning. My name is Dr. Jennifer Tong. I am the director of the Healthcare Surge Capacity Planning Branch of the County of Santa Clara Emergency Operations Center. 
We have a team of almost 50 people who are dedicated full-time, working seven days a week to strengthen the preparedness of our county to manage an increase in the volume of hospitalized patients and otherwise um, patients who need medical care. We are collaborating with each hospital in our county, focusing on multiple areas, but there are three of which that I want to um, speak about today. First, personal protective equipment, or PPE. It is crucial that every person who's taking care of patients in our community has access to the supplies and equipment that they need to stay healthy because their ability to continue working is uh, one of the most important parts of our surge capacity planning. We are working hard to understand what volume of patients we might need to prepare for um, and what volume of personal protective equipment that we need to prepare for. Likewise, we're working hard to understand the inventory across our county of such equipment. Our next task after that is to try to close that gap between what we anticipate we might need and what is currently available. Due to the worldwide demand for these items, we are um, focused on local um, expertise and supplies to help close that gap. The second key item that we're working on is bed capacity. Each hospital in our county is adding additional beds and in many cases entire units um, to help care for an increased number of hospitalized patients. We are all collaborating to identify the equipment, supplies, medications that we all need to prepare for to take care of such an increase in volume. We're adding 250 beds at the Santa Clara Convention Center. Um, those beds will be primarily for patients who um, are, have been hospitalized, all of whom will be COVID positive and who need a safe place to go after the time of discharge. We are also working on increasing available beds in our county for patients who have skilled nursing needs. That means they might have been in the hospital, are no longer sick enough to require hospitalization, but continue to need enough uh, nursing care that they are unable to go home or to any other um, independent living. Our third area of focus is around staffing. With that increase in bed capacity that I just described, our staffing needs change dramatically. Each hospital is working on plans how they can creatively restructure care teams to incorporate um, uh, volunteers from the community. They're also working on ways to expedite hiring practices to bring in new staff to their care teams. Within the next couple of days, we will be releasing an online intake form for those in our community to express their interest and uh, experience and expertise to contribute to the care of patients throughout our continuum of care. Finally, we would like to thank all of our people in our community who are taking care of patients. We would like to thank all of our hospitals for collaborating with us, the multiple elected officials, government entities, and industries. Um, the collaboration of all of these different individuals and groups are what will strengthen our preparedness for a potential surge in our patient volumes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Tong, and thank you to your team for making sure that we are prepared uh, for this crisis. Next, I'm gonna ask our president of the Board of Supervisors, who along with the board have been making sure that we as a county are as ready as we can be, uh, Board President Cindy Chavez. Thank you, and let me um, start by thanking all of you who are at home, who are doing your best to make sure we're not spreading this virus. I'll do a reminder that it's been many days, so it's hard to remember to wash your face, uh, I mean, wash your hands and not touch your face and all of those other um, careful things that you can do in terms of wiping down your environment and making sure your space is clean. Um, one of the reasons that I was so excited about today is that a number of you have been asking us about where can we learn more about um, how many beds there are, where can we learn more about how many cases there are, where can we learn more about testing. And I want to just say how much I appreciate the leadership of the Santa Clara County Public Health Department in making sure that these grids are public because we want to be transparent. So if you go on sccphd.org, um, and backslash coronavirus, you'll see each of these dashboards. One that explains all the new cases that we're getting, 
one that explains how many people are passing, one that, it, that shows you what we know about testing, and we don't have all the information yet, but we're going to keep um, updating those databases, and one that reflects what our needs are for the hospital. The reason this is so important is we want you to know what you can do to help and also what is happening on your behalf. I think it's very concerning. Um, if I were at home, I'd want to know this information, and that's why we're making it public. Uh, let me just close with this, and I'm going to try to remember to say this um, every time I get a chance to talk to you, uh, the public. Let's make sure that we're being extra supportive and kind to our grocery workers, to the folks who are making food, who, to the truck drivers. Let's make sure we're thanking everybody in our health system. These are really challenging times, and we have some people who haven't been able to work, and a number of you are working at home, some of you who have lost your jobs, but we have a lot of people firefighters, police officers, the ambulance drivers, people who are essential workers on the front line who are doing their very best to make sure our community stays safe. So let's stay patient with them and let's stay patient with each other. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Chavez. And I just, uh, on behalf of the county executive, I want people of this county to know, the county of Santa Clara residents to know that we have hundreds of people at the Emergency Operations Center who, as we speak, are working hard to make sure that if a bed is needed in this county, that that bed is available, that if a ventilator is needed, that that ventilator is available. Uh, a lot of thought and energy has gone into this effort, uh, and we are doing everything we can to make sure that we're ready for any surge when it happens. Uh, but the only way that we can ensure that we have the public trust is by being transparent about our efforts, and that's why those dashboards are there, and we will continue to update, uh, update them on a daily basis and to provide as much information as, as we can. So with that, we'll open uh, questions to our speakers. Yes. So you uh, ticked through the list of numbers for various facilities and ventilators that are available. Do you have similar figures for how many have been taken up so far by COVID positive I'll turn it over to Dr. Tong. The question is if we have data on how many beds in our um, hospitals have been taken up currently by COVID positive patients. And uh, the answer is that yes, we do have that information. In fact, on the new dashboard about hospital capacity, um, there is some information there about the number of hospitalized patients in our county um, who are COVID positive. And uh, is that good um, the question is if that also includes the number of ventilators that are taken up. Yes, the dashboard also includes data on the number of uh, ventilators in use um, as well as ventilators remaining available. Those numbers are not, those numbers are definitely not static. Um, each day new patients are um, put on ventilators, some patients come off ventilators, and uh, our supply of ventilators in the county um, is also dynamic as we uh, receive some supplies and uh, repair some supplies that are in need of, of repair. Thank you, Dr. Tong. Any other question? Yes. Is there, is there any kind of concern that these numbers and this, these updates will actually cause a public reaction, make people concerned or maybe react to saying like a shortage or feeling like there's something? Is there anything within that information to kind of give a perspective and provide more information besides the numbers? So the question is if there is any concern on the part of the county uh, if by providing this information that we will create some concern within the public uh, about uh, whether or not we're ready in light of those numbers. Uh, and I would certainly uh, turn it over to Dr. Tong and President Chavez, but I would simply begin that from the perspective of Dr. Smith. The reason we want to be transparent is because we want the public to be confident that we are doing everything we can to be ready. I think you'll see on the current dashboard um, that in many ways it is reassuring that um, we are in a county with um, a, a large number of hospital beds, critical care beds, ventilators. Um, so by sharing the data, in some ways I think it will reassure people that our hospitals currently have um, a significant amount of remaining capacity. 
Um, I think another reason for sharing the data is to highlight the importance of the social distancing order. Um, with each additional efforts towards social distancing, we anticipate that our, um, our prevalence of illness in our community, as well as our number of hospitalized patients, uh, should be impacted by that increased social distancing. And so uh, there's a close association between the social distancing orders and the um, measurement of capacity in our community. Let me just add two points to that. It's a very good question. Will it make people more nervous if we have this information and we make it public? Um, two things I would say. One is the public is asking us for that information, and I think partly they want to know how they can help. And so one of the points that I wanted to raise is that through the Valley Medical Center Foundation, uh, the VMC Foundation, we've received almost $5 million in um, cash and you know people giving us money so we can buy more equipment and supplies but even more important we've gotten a lot of help through the silicon valley leadership group in partnership with our foundation to help us locate places to buy ventilators or to buy other equipment that we think is important so one thing i would say to all of you who are looking for a way to help one of the ways you can help is go to the VM vmc foundation um, go online and make a contribution to them and if you have PPE at home, if you run a construction company that's not uh, operating right now, we're accepting donations as well. So the idea here is we're going to ask for the public's help because we're really in this together. And I will clo uh, close on that point about the, the, what, what this information uh, should mean to the public. Uh, I, I personally think that it's reassuring if you're a resident of the county to know that on March 31st there were 936 hospital beds available in the county, that there were still uh, 92 ICU beds available, that there were still uh, 392 ventilators that were ready to be used in the case, in case that there, there was a need. Uh, but we also want them to know that these numbers can change on a daily basis and that we're not done. We're going to continue to make sure that we increase this capacity, that we find more beds and that we find more equipment, including more ventilators and the personal protection equipment that has been discussed. Any, any other question? So the numbers that you gave earlier, those were open beds. That was the total beds in the county, those were beds that are perfect. That were available, exactly. Uh, just uh, as a final point, uh, we have many monolingual speakers in the county, and there, there is an opportunity after this briefing uh, to speak to someone in Spanish and Vietnamese and Chinese. Uh, so again, uh, thank you for tuning in. And just to, uh, as a reminder that the county is doing daily briefings at 10 a.m., uh, and we will continue to make sure that the residents of the county have all the information they need.